Hello friends, I'm Fide Instructor Atul Dahale and welcome to my YouTube channel Maxim Witcher Lagreff, a name which is synonymous for the Sicilian nest of opening. Over the past few years, MVL has established himself not only as the top player in the world but also as one of the best players in the world who plays Sicilian nest of opening. He is the expert of this opening and there is a lot to learn from his games when he plays Sicilian Nashdorf. Well guys, some players might call it Sicilian Nadorf, I call it Sicilian Nashdorf. Okay, so pay attention to the game, not on the pronunciation. Okay, so we'll be getting straight to the game which was played in Champions Chess Tour, Air Things Masters Knockout Tournament. The game was played between Wesley So and MVL and in this game MVL played in a such a beautiful way that I really love this game. Okay, because he took advantage of small small things in the game and he established his pieces in such a way that he did not give so many chances to his opponent and when the right time came he played a very nice tactical idea and converted the good position into a tactical and from that tactical he won the game in a very nice fashion so guys without further delay we'll be getting straight to the game but before we go further i would like to tell you that don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new here. So the game started with e4, Wesley so was white, MVL was black, c5 obviously, knight of 3, d6, this is the Sicilian Nashdorf starting position you can say, d4, c4, knight d4, knight of 6, knight c3 and a6. This is the basic position of Nashdorf. There were other alternatives in the position which you play, if you play then the position will be completely different, it will not be a Sicilian Nashdorf position it will be something else like if you can play g6 then it will be dragon knight c6 classical and so on okay white plays bishop e3 which is kind of a very standard opening knight g4 attacking the bishop here the main line is bishop g5 which was not actually played in the game h6 bishop h4 g5 bishop g3 bishop g7 and the game could have continued like maybe bishop e2 then the knight is being attacked so knight comes in the center of the board and the position is quite tricky okay but bishop g5 was not played in the game bishop c1 he went back and black also came back so you might ask me why did he play this move when he had to it is just to check what your opponent is going to do ultimately white players usually go for something else they don't repeat the game means repeat the position and draw the game he played h3 which is very trending in nowadays okay so the most principled way to play the Sicilian Nashdorf is to strike into the center early in the game by playing the move e5. Okay, if you are playing other moves like g6, then e6, all these moves are not the pure Sicilian Nashdorf position. e5 when you play, this is the pure Nashdorf. Okay, so knight has two moves, uh, mainly two moves like knight f3 and knight b3. Sometimes knight d8 is also played, but knight b3 was the choice of Wesley. So in this position. And now MVL plays bishop e6. Some of you might ask me that why not play bishop e7 early in the game. Well, sometimes black also opt for developing this bishop on this diagonal. With the moves like h5, g6, if it's played like that, then the bishop will be much more developed on uh, or better placed on this diagonal instead of bishop e7. That's why they wait. And the, usually the main idea in Nashdorf is to develop the pieces in the center of the board especially the knights will be developed on d7 and f6 bishop will come on e6 and the bishop on f8 will come on e7 protecting the backward pawn that is on d6 okay only when the white player plays knight d5 and there is no need to protect the pawn on d6 in such positions black players go for g6 and bishop g7 this kind of variations okay so bishop e3 developing the bishop as i said knight should be developed on d7 that is the basic position okay now white played g4 which is kind of the idea of h3 so no denial about that thing h6 a very important move because if you want to slow down white in this position then h6 is very important okay so here in this position Westy so played a very daring move he committed f4 in this position without waiting for developing his pieces early in the game and i will tell you this is not the accurate way to play in the position okay maybe this is something new he wanted to try but usually usually i'll just tell you that queen d2 is the more common theory here in this position then black can go for bishop e7 or even you can play queen c7 and then long castle will be played and the game will continue okay 
but he plays f4 without developing the queen and certainly it has some kind of drawbacks in the position and which were quite apparent he captured on f4 bishop into f4 and the surprise move which came on the board was knight h5 this is a really surprising move because now if we capture g into h4 then uh, we can play queen h4 and the bishop on f1 will be hanging one more thing is that casting will be broken in that case and black will be the one who will have a great position the knight will be having a great central square two bishops are there plus white's king is very very well placed so somehow you can see that f4 bishop f4 this backfired white after knight h5 move and the bishop is being attacked bishop goes to e3 square and now he captures the bishop on f1 in a very nice way he plays knight g3 he rook h2 and knight takes f1 king takes f1 now if you take the stock of the position then you will understand that black has got two bishops in the position correct and he has a very beautiful square on e5 for the knight and we'll see how did he like took advantage of uh, take advantage of this thing so after this he immediately played h5 because he needs to create his own chances against white's king okay so knight d4 centralizing the knight very important move h takes g4 and now he captures knight into e6 f into e6 and queen into g4 now it feels that okay white is also getting his pieces in the game but one more thing you should understand that unless and until white manages to push this pawn forward or capture this pawn he will never get the central square okay before some time the pawn on d6 was not that good but because these two pawns are there in the center black doesn't need to worry about anything in the center of the board the pawn on e4 is actually a weakness the pawn on h3 is also a weakness and the king is obviously not so well placed in the position so here mvl goes for queen f6 check bringing the piece in the game supporting the pawn on e6 king e2 and now it's time to centralize your knight in the center with knight e5 move i will tell you whenever your knight arrives on e5 square it is one of the best squares for the knight because first of all it is sitting in front of one isolated pawn another thing is that now it is controlling so many squares which are important in opponent's camp and obviously for defense also it is very important because it is controlling this all these squares okay so in a way knight is very well placed in the center of the board so queen g3 and now here he understands that his opponent wants to play rook f1 so he plays one uh, nice move a sneaky move queen f7 the idea is after you play rook f1 he has this queen h5 check king d2 and the threats of knight c4 followed by capturing here are always there and if he manages to do that thing i will say that black will be the one who will be on top but before he goes for knight c4 he plays some important move that is bishop e7 now the pawn on g7 is hanging but if you capture the pawn on g7 then it will be a little bit uh, difficult position for you after knight c4 this is one of the moves which you can play or you can say like okay we have another interesting idea that is king to d7 because after king d7 the rook on a8 suddenly will be coming in the game with rook g8 and the queen will be feeling very uncomfortable in this position because there is no rook f7 in this position business because knight is kept like controlling the f7 square and you can say that seem the king which is in the center will be very safe because his pawn shelter and the pieces around him so this is the magic of sicilian nash dog even if your piece your king is in the center of the board still it is very very safe okay so now king c1 was played he did not go for uh, pawn on g7 he protects the pawn with bishop f6 and now king d1 okay finally you can say that white has uh, gone to that side of the board as if he has artificially castled and the king is now safe but okay that king is safe we agree but black's king is also very very safe in the position so he plays knight c4 going for white's king side you can say obviously it is queen side but the king which is there now bishop was played on f4 and here he castles just being very safe and no problem the king is uh, still in the uh, safe zone and one more thing is that the pawn on d6 is no longer a uh, free pawn because uh, we can obviously we can go for knight into d6 if we want otherwise there is a good move can you see the good move well i can i I can understand that you can definitely get that move that because here bishop into c3 is a good idea because okay you can capture on uh, f8 then I will capture it here if bishop captures here then uh, we always have this queen d1 check and mate okay 
so he cannot really leave the back rank check and uh, it will not be a good idea from white's perspective so we need to be very careful of capturing the pawn on d6 okay he plays rook g2 threatening uh, something on g7 square but we don't need to uh, uh, worry mvl just protects everything with rook f7 now there is no threat of uh, attacking on f8 also and now he plays rook g1 again pressurizing on g7 square and now in this position okay white uh, black played a nice move bishop d4 attacking on g1 plus putting some pressure on f4 and another thing is that the screen can always swing over to a5 square and put more pressure on c3 as well as b2 pawn okay so rook e1 and here as i was talking queen a5 was the best move with the ideas like knight into b2 king into b2 and uh, this knight is queen so we can just play rook c8 and the piece on c3 is going to fall very soon or we can even play queen b4 followed by bishop into c3 and white should be winning in that black should be winning in that case so queen f4 was a very strong move but okay mvl plays a very natural move which is rook c8 which is equally important and which is equally good in this position nothing really bad about that move now obviously the threat is knight into b2 so he plays knight d1 protecting the b2 pawn and now he brings it another uh, piece to this side of the board he plays rook c f8 now you might ask me the play was going on on the queen side now he's shifting his piece on the king side why is he really doing that thing because this bishop on f4 is the key in the position it cannot really go anywhere so easily let's suppose you move it to c1 square okay then we have a good move that is rook to f1 we will be exchanging pieces We'll, we'll be looking at this same variation which happened in the game but before that west is so played queen d3 attacking on these two pieces okay so he first of all protects the pieces with queen c5 because these two pieces are very well placed and we don't want to exchange those pieces it is said that we should always try to keep the pieces which are good for you on the board so he plays that thing now c3 is played bishop is being attacked bishop is uh, played on e5 square centralizing your pieces okay is very important bishop h6 and now he brings the rook in the game with rook f3 queen is being attacked queen goes to this square and now he supports the g7 pawn with rook at f7 again white threatens on g7 but we don't need to worry we are everything covered because of this bishop which is sitting very nicely uh, in the center of the board this knight is also there so he captures the pawn attacks the bishop on h6 bishop goes back to c1 and now he just plays rook h2 he wants to exchange the pieces and after this uh, exchange the rook on g1 is actually the one who is hanging in this position he captures on g1 and now rook h3 and he goes for b5 supporting the knight and also at some point once we protect the knight here the threat is obviously to play rook f1 okay so he plays queen h5 going for the queen h8 checkmate how will you protect that checkmate obviously you must play g3 the queen doesn't have any great squares in this position okay you uh, you need to be there on this diagonal also because uh, the knight is very important so he goes back and now the rook comes on this square this is a uh, piece is hanging so he supports it and now the very simple and easy solution which was played by mvl i really like the solution right means the move which he played he plays simple move rook e1 attacking the queen okay now if you play queen f3 then he goes for queen f1 and he wants to action the queens and in this position surprisingly Wesley so actually resigned but if you see the position more deeply then you can understand why did he resign because if you play queen f1 rook f1 the pawn on g file is controlled like completely fine it is going forward plus the knight is also very placed bishop is well placed these pieces are not coming in the game pawn on e4 is going to fall very soon we can just bring the king up and black is the one who will be winning this position slowly and gradually so guys i really love this game and i hope that you also enjoyed this game with me and if you like uh, this video uh, don't forget to like also and i'll be very happy if you put some comments in the video okay so guys we will be meeting very soon with uh, another interesting game till that moment take care and goodbye